in between days. I run down empty streets each morning through a campus evacuated of students and faculty, past vacant classrooms, offices, cafeterias, dorms, studios, galleries, performance halls, the library, tennis courts, baseball, lacrosse, and soccer fields, the basketball arena, and the football stadium's 50,000 vacant seats. I run past shuttered stores, empty houses of worship, useless parking lots, shut down malls, silent restaurants, lifeless bars, and coffee shops. Back home, I face a six foot wide window at my five foot wide Scandinavian desk, observing the yard and street between Zoom meetings, online teaching, replying to email, reading students' poetry, essays, and fiction, canceling travel plans, bugging airlines and hotels for refunds. Blue Jays perch each morning on the black iron railing and mailbox outside my window. Robins, cardinals, bluebirds, and crows sing, glide and feed in cleaner air. Lizards bask on pedestrian-free sidewalks. Squirrels scamper across empty lawns. The neighbors on the corner paint their house white. Audis, Volvos, Jeeps, and Suburbans sit idle, gather coats of dust and pollen. Walkers, runners, and cyclists emerge from lockdown, strain themselves on trafficless streets. Muscle cars grind, scrape mufflers on a speed bump hit at speed, drivers breaking seconds too late. A masked elderly couple stroll past each afternoon, holding frail hands. A stranded international student wearing red gym shorts and a purple polo shirt rides his scooter up and down the boulevard like a leopard pacing an enclosure. Former students stroll past my house wearing running shoes, baggy sorority t-shirts and hidden shorts, earbuds inserted, immersed in video chats, unaware of my presence behind the glass. A white porcelain toilet sits beside the curb collecting pollen waiting for bulk trash pickup day. City workers cut excess boughs from the live oaks shading the street, drag limbs to the wood chipper, grind the life out of branches and leaves. Pickup trucks cruise past, drivers' elbows protruding from windows, searching for salvageable furniture, copper and appliances. We create a new routine check infection rates and death tolls each morning, study curves and graphs, practice social distancing, keep six feet apart, cough into elbows, work remotely, inspect expectorant, obsess over the impossibility of testing, decry government negligence and incompetence. We mourn the absence of our previous lives, cancel travel visits to parents. We endure the loss of the newly forbidden. Restaurants, bars, gyms, and theaters are closed. Festivals and readings are canceled. St. Patrick's Day is canceled. Weddings, marathons, concerts, birthday parties, and family reunions are all canceled while we wait for the cure. Our future canceled, we meekly retreat into well-known corners remodel bathrooms, paint the walls sky blue, install new light fixtures in the dining room and kitchen, trim the hedges, set up a backyard pool, clean out the garage, saw off overhanging branches from the neighbor's magnolia, plant tomatoes, strawberries, kale, rosemary, oregano, and basil, dine al fresco in the backyard build a custom skateboard, resurrect old tricks.